Hello everyone, welcome back to another online lecture for organic chemistry. This is part of the organic synthesis series and today we're going to be tackling oxymercuration demercuration. And this is the second of three major processes or syntheses that we can use in order to hydrate an alkene and create an alcohol. So let's get started with this. I'm going to bring this up here. Now, a couple of things that are different from the acidic mechanism or the acidic reaction that we looked at. The first thing is that we have two distinct steps here. And we haven't really seen this much before in synthesis, but if you can see how it's numbered one and two when you're looking here, that represents the order in which these steps must occur. So sometimes you may see things above the arrow and below the arrow, and you're sort of just putting it in at the same time and letting the reaction occur. In this case, we have to do step one and let it proceed to completion before we do step two. So that's just something I wanted to point out um, in regards to synthesis. When you see those numbers, they're talking about stepwise addition, if you were ever in the lab and had to do this. Because in the lab, a lot of times these uh, syntheses, when we do them, you don't just dump everything into a flask and start moving. Sometimes you do that. But usually you need to uh, have some sort of a stepwise procedure and you can't put all of it in at once because it would ruin the reaction. So... Uh, there's that that I want to point out, and then this um, this mercury agent here looks a little bit complex to things that we've seen before, and we're going to go into this in a little more detail on the next slide, but mercury really has uh, a pair of electrons that it can use to donate over to the alkene as the alkene reaches out to it, and so what we're going to end up seeing is sort of like a bromonium ion formation that occurs in the mechanism. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention here is that in the oxymercuration demercuration reaction, we are going to see Markovnikov addition observed, and we will show why that is observed uh, as we're going through this reaction. It should be somewhat obvious based on previous mechanisms in the series, um, particularly the halohydrin formation. So you can go back and relook at that mechanism in detail if you're sort of confused with this one. Uh, and other than that, there will be anti-addition, but you can't really distinguish the anti-addition because you're adding an alcohol and a hydrogen. So a lot of times the hydrogen, uh, the way that we write organic compounds, it's just sort of included with the carbon. So you technically would have the hydrogen that adds uh, completely anti or opposite from the OH, but we tend not to show that quite as much in this reaction, although it would occur. So let's go ahead and get started with this mechanism. All right, so here is the setup for the oxymercuration demercuration mechanism. And like I said, one of the things I wanted to sort of point out or go into a little more detail with was the OAC. So you see here HgOAC2. And when we have that, what we're really looking at is a mercury containing compound that has two OAC groups where OAC stands for a O acetyl and acetyl is a C double bond O with a CH3, kind of like acetic acid or any other group that has that functionality with it. And so you can see at the top here, OAC is equal to the O minus next to the carbonyl with the CH3. And so that's kind of important because that's a resonance stabilized ion. We can go back and forth between those two oxygens to spread out that minus charge. And so this will make a somewhat decent leaving group when we're trying to come in and attack the uh, mercury ion. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So the alkene is going to come in, attack the mercury ion, and sort of like when we had the Br2 mechanism, the mercury is going to give some of its electrons back and it's going to kick off the OAC as it's doing that. And so what's going to end up as the uh, product of that, or the it's not a product, but an intermediate, is the mercuric ion that we see down here. So we have a mercuric, it still has one of the acetyls, and notice that three-membered ring structure, just like the bromonium ion that we have seen before. We have a three-membered uh, mercury ring structure bound up with these two carbons, kind of a unique intermediate here. Now, at this point, we're going to break away the mercury intermediate ion and we need to have H2O come in. So if you remember, if you go back to that first uh, image that we showed, it said that there was H2O along with the mercury. And so the H2O is going to come in and act as a nucleophile here. 
And I'm not going to go into great detail because if you've seen the previous mechanisms in the series, you should know this by now. But the H2O is going to attack to this carbon on the left here instead of this carbon on the right. And so the reason for that, hopefully you realize at this point, is that that carbon is tertiary and the other one is secondary. So why are we attacking the tertiary? Because if the mercury is going to break away and take its electrons from that carbon, we need to be able to start to build a partial positive buildup on one of these carbons, whichever one is going to start breaking away from the mercury. And it would be more beneficial to have a tertiary carbocation buildup than a secondary. Now remember, this isn't a formal carbocation. This is a partial positive buildup. But it starts to resemble a carbocation. And so therefore, that's the reason the H2O is going to attack that carbon. So there's the Markovnikov addition. And you can also see the anti-addition here because we have, just like before, how we had the bromonium ion, we have this large mercuric ion sitting on top. We have to bring the H2O in from the bottom, which will eventually become our alcohol. So we proceed forward. This should be a fairly standard uh, part of this mechanism that you recognize by this point. The HgOAC breaks away uh, over to the less substituted carbon, and the more substituted carbon now has H2O on it. Remember, you can't just bring that in as an alcohol. It comes in as water, so you have to have that proton, that extra proton removed in order to make it an alcohol. And so we do that, we're going to take the ACO minus, so the first uh, O acetyl group that left at the beginning of the reaction comes in to grab that hydrogen, and then you will have the electrons from the hydrogen-oxygen bond go back to the oxygen and restore neutrality to that plus charge, so we end up with the alcohol. You proceed over to the next step, and you can see, very right here, you can very clearly see the anti, right? We have the, the mercury on the top, and 180 degrees on the bottom, we have the alcohol. Well, the next step, we don't really tend to teach uh, mechanistically. You can learn the mechanism, and you could look up another video in more detail if you were interested. But this process is called a reduction. So the second step uses NaBH4. NaBH4 produces what's called a hydride ion. This is really sodium borohydride. And hydride ions are H minuses. They're a bit rare, certainly in comparison to H pluses, but an H minus is going to do a reduction process in which the uh, mercury ion is going to be removed from this compound and a hydrogen is going to put, be put in place of it. And that's really all that I would ask you to know. That's usually what most teachers would ask you to know. You're going to learn a little more about reduction in detail in organic chemistry too, but for right now, if you can get through the bulk of this process, um, just knowing that NaBH4 reduces it down to a hydrogen is fine um, in terms of the mechanism. And there you go. You're at your final compound there. So notice this is a Markovnikov addition. So the oxymercuration demercuration mechanism uh, is very different than the acidic addition that we learned last time, but we still get the same compound. We still get the same product out. So there is one big difference outside of the anti-addition um, that's observed here. We can't have that in the, uh, the acidic addition because we had a formal carbocation, which was trigonal planar. We could add from the top or the bottom. Um, but what we notice here is if you take a look, the mercuric intermediate, so that three-membered mercury ring, because there is no formal carbocation, the one thing that this reaction prevents that I could have in my acidic hydrations is a rearrangement of carbocations. So when I have just an acidic catalyzed uh, hydration addition, my alcohol can really end up in a carbocation rearrangement. So the carbocation, if it's a secondary and it's next to a tertiary position, it can rearrange itself through a hydride shift or a methyl shift. But here, because there is no formal carbocation, we cannot have a rearrangement of carbocations. And so what's kind of unique about this uh, mechanism is that it will give you Markovnikov addition, but you will avoid any potential rearrangement of a carbocation. So it can kind of be to a benefit if you were in the lab and you were trying to you know, produce an alcohol in a specific spot and the spot right next to it would be prone to rearrangement, you could avoid that using this uh, technique. And so that's pretty much it for this mechanism and the things I wanted to highlight or talk about. So I'm going to put up the practice problems right here. As usual, go ahead and pause and you can resume it afterwards and I will put the answers up. So go ahead and try these now. Okay, welcome back. And I'm going to flash the answers up here. 
Hopefully this is what you guys got. This is actually going to mirror the answers that you would have had for the acidic hydration one. Um, because this it's a Markovnikov edition. So outside of a rearrangement, which none of these three would have, you're going to have the same answers. Now, the next one that we go through is going to be the uh, boron reagent. So we're going to have hydroboration. And in that case, you're going to observe anti-Markovnikov. So we will take a look at why that happens next time. Um, and I will see you guys for that one. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe uh, for all the latest updates and for contact with me. And other than that, I thank you guys very much for investing the time and learning with me, and I will see you guys for the next video. Thanks.